What's up everybody? It's Matt with that Jeep Adventure. Uh, today I am loaded up early because I'm headed to Biloxi. I've got the CJ on the trailer here. Uh, been working on a bunch of stuff, getting it ready for Moab. I've been having a few issues, pretty much rebuilt the whole steering. New gearbox, new power steering pump, steering shaft. Um, I mean, everything about it is new and it still won't turn. I mean, I, I think it's in the gearbox. So I have a new gearbox. I'm gonna swap it out with the already new one that's in there. So I swap that out. Hopefully, hopefully that's my problem. So we're gonna work on that today. Also, the clutch on this thing is really hard to press in. I mean, it's doable, but I don't wanna do it for an entire day of wheeling, especially five days in a row when we go out to Moab. So I've gotta get that looked at. So going down to the donut shop and they are gonna help me check everything out. And hopefully we can get some information and make some changes that'll make this thing easier and ready for the trip. So we made it down here to the donut shop. Uh, we have the Jeep up on the rack, and he's been looking, what do you call that tightening screw? What was that? That's just the mesh adjustment for the steering gear in the box. Okay, so he was messing with the mesh gear. Uh, this is like an adjustment, right? Okay, so he was messing with the screw, trying to see if that was why it was so hard to turn. No luck there, so we have a new box here. Um, we're about to take a look at that, maybe swap it out if I we have turn to. Turn that by hand. Yeah, the other one was not like that out of the box. Yeah. Man, we got it. We might as well just get busy. That's what I'm saying. Let's do it. Okay. Steering box time. All right, so Jason thinks he found the issue here. Uh, it was going to be the screw that sets the gear mesh. So uh, he's going to show us a little bit about how that works just uh, so you guys can know what to do if your box goes in a bind or also he said he used it to tighten his on his excursion and yeah. it pulled a lot of the slop out of the steering. This so. really is most of these boxes that have this adjustment this is a way you can get some of your play out. So we're going to show you just how small the angles are because it's a very fine adjustment and uh, you know this is our first time cracking into a Durango box but having a one that was wrong versus a new one we were able to kind of see where we might have made a mistake. So right here we have the cap that's tapped for a hydro assist. Um, this is the lock nut that locks down on the adjustment shaft of the steering box. So you see how we have a difference in the depth there. So, I mean, we're, we're almost a good half inch from the top of one to the other. So the adjustment of this affects the, how much uh, the, mesh is tightened and stuff like that so you see how far that one is when we took the new box apart these were almost flush with one another so when we initially took this off of this cap the adjustment shaft was almost an eighth of an inch below the nylock so if you move over here to the new box you notice we haven't broke any of these seals on their box yet but it's actually opposite of that so it's an eighth of an inch up so you know when you do make an adjustment on these steering boxes, I don't even think they recommend anything more than just maybe an eighth of a turn and it can make a world of difference. But so if you feel a stiff spot in your steering, you went way too far. So it could be even less than like a 16th, a 16th of a turn. So then you lock it back down with that nylock. But uh, we're gonna swap caps on these and uh, see if we can't get it fixed up. So one of the things you got to take into consideration is the shaft that this gear rides on actually pivots on it. So you got to remember how high this nylock is on this shaft when you're going back in because that's going to adjust the depth of the mesh. So 
we got it back to the factory settings here so we're gonna put this back on the box and see how it turns All right, so I think these were all steps in the right direction because now that the box is back together, we can actually turn the input shaft. And on the other one, it was so bound up that that wasn't happening. So uh, the front cap was really easy to swap. You just pop the ring off and uh, just swapped the, the tapped cap from the old box. So um, I'll show you what it looked like here. So now we just got to stick it back in the Jeep and get the system bled and it's going to be a bunch of work bleeding the system because I think it's kind of a pain with the hydraulic assist. A little bit, a little bit. Yeah. But the big thing is not to fire up that motor until you feel like you got it majority of the way. Then you just want to fire up the motor for just a few seconds, shut it back down, see if it sends any more air bubbles through there. You don't want to aerate that uh, steering pump, burn it up. So the new steering box is in the Jeep. We uh, had the lines hooked up, but we're about to take a break and go grab some food and bleed the steering when we get back and then hopefully maybe look at the clutch and see if we can figure that out. But in the meantime, the video that we did a few weeks ago about Matt Colrick's Alumi LJ build uh, is coming along pretty nicely. He has the tub on now, so I'm gonna get with Matt here and let him show you uh, some of the new stuff. What's up, y'all? We, uh, since the last time you saw it, Put the tub on we mounted the genrite console with the sand hollow speed shifter a kibby tech hoon handle we're waiting for uh wednesday jason will for with uh ridiculous speed shop will be out to run all the stainless brake lines um my derail trans cooler and finish her up so we can uh, start bolting uh, the rest of the body back together. So what are you waiting on? You're still waiting on a couple things. I'm waiting on my Genrite cage, PRP seats, and pretty much that's it. And then we can bolt her and finish her up. So you can see the state at the moment. We're still working on it. We went to eat and uh, we came back and we were gonna bleed it. We've probably been bleeding it for like an hour and it's not getting any easier. So now we've got the Pittman arm back off trying to isolate different parts of the steering and see if we can find where the bind is at. So uh, no luck still. We're burning. It's on fire. Okay, well, it's been a way longer day than I think everybody expected. Uh, we did not get the steering completely dialed in. We diagnosed everything piece by piece, and I think we have determined that it was the hydraulic ram. We're not 100% sure, but we took the ram off of Rich's YJ and put it on and just. Uh, did a little bit of bleeding on it and instantly I feel like it was a lot better. So yeah, it felt so, like it was a whole lot better. Yeah, like like half half as hard right. as it was before. Right. So um, I'm going to try to maybe take my RAM and get it either checked out or just get a new one on the way. Um, and then when we get it fully bled, hopefully, hopefully that'll be the end of that. Right. We looked at the clutch for just a moment too. Uh, pretty much we think it's just a hard clutch. Uh, just Seems like it's just one of those things where it's just a clutch made for the street and doesn't have enough leverage on it. Uh, it's not going to work out on the trail. And it's a trail Jeep. Yep. So I think the, the first thing we're going to do to start there is try to move the point where the master cylinder mounts. We're going to try to move it up on the pedal to try to get more leverage on the pedal, I yeah, guess. Correct, correct uh, geometry le leverage. Yeah. Yep. So, but 
that's going to be next time we everybody is whooped so we are about to head home for the day and uh mess with it again that's right whenever when, when we get to it next that's right so all right well for uh i guess it's gonna do it for now so peace peace